both parties and U.S. Congress chair Zelensky's speech. Trump paid no income tax in 2020. Shanghai Hospital warns of tragic battle as COVID spreads. Fans spent 39% more at Qatar World Cup. Festive shoppers in Romania feel the pinch of soaring costs. Groundbreaking Mars mission comes to an end. Dolphins show hallmarks of Alzheimer's disease. Customers outraged at potential donkey mask change. Hello, I'm Johnny. Thank you for joining us on Funding News. It's Friday, December 23rd, and here are your top stories. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky told the U.S. Congress on Wednesday that the tens of billions of dollars of aid it had approved to help it fight a Russian invasion was not charity, but an investment in global security. He told a House chamber jammed with hundreds of lawmakers that Ukraine's fight was for the greater good, and he thanked all Americans for their assistance. Zelensky told U.S. lawmakers that he hoped they would continue to support Ukraine on a bipartisan basis. Ukrainians and for Americans for all. This battle cannot be frozen or postponed. Zelensky's arrival was greeted with multiple raucous ovations in the newly full chamber. Three members held up a large Ukrainian flag as he walked in. Zelensky said, We defeated Russia in the battle for the minds of the world. He said, It is a great honor for me to be at the U.S. Congress and speak to you and all Americans. Against all doom and gloom scenarios, Ukraine did not fall. U.S. House members and senators from both parties leaped repeatedly to their feet to cheer Zelensky's speech in English. According to tax figures released by the U.S. House of Representatives Ways and Means Committee on Tuesday, Donald Trump paid no income tax during the final full year of his presidency as he reported a loss from his sprawling business interests. His tax records show that Trump's income and his tax liability fluctuated dramatically during his four years in the White House. The committee questioned the legitimacy of some of those deductions, and members said that on Tuesday, the tax returns were short on details. I will tell you that, number one, I pay tremendous numbers of taxes. The panel is expected to release redacted versions of his full returns in the coming days. Reuters reported that Trump refused to make his tax returns public during his two presidential bids and his campaign for office, even though all other major party presidential candidates have done so for decades. The panel found that the U.S. Internal Revenue Service had not audited presidents' tax returns every year until Democrats pressed for action in 2019. The IRS did not examine some of the deductions claimed by Trump. A Shanghai hospital has told its staff to prepare for a tragic battle with COVID-19 and it expects half of the city's 25 million people will get infected by the end of next week because the virus is sweeping through China largely unchecked. The Shanghai Deji Hospital posted on its WeChat account late on Wednesday estimated there were about 5.43 million positives in the city and that 12.5 million in China's main commercial hub will get infected by the end of the year. China is on the brink of a COVID-19 storm, possibly the largest since the pandemic started three years ago. It's estimated the country is experiencing at least 1 million infections and 5,000 deaths every day. The private hospital said this year's Christmas Eve, New Year's Day and the Lunar New Year are destined to be unsafe. In this tragic battle, the entire Greater Shanghai will fall and we will infect all the staff of the hospital. We will infect the whole family. Our patients will all be infected. We have no choice and we cannot escape. British-based health data firm Airfinity said this week infections in China are likely to be more than a million a day with deaths at more than 5,000 a day. According to data from Visa, the only official payment provider of the 2022 Qatar World Cup, fans spend 39% more in stadiums than they did at the 2018 World Cup in Russia. Visa said visitors from Saudi Arabia, the U.S., the United Arab Emirates, Mexico and the U.K. spent the most money. The final between Argentina and France on December 18th saw the largest spending of any game. Likewise, FIFA said it made $7.5 billion in the four-year cycle. That's $1 billion more than expected. So this one's 620 and this? 165. Okay. 
While the early data suggest fans spend big, the media said tournament organizers in Qatar felt different. They were hoping the World Cup would provide a $17 billion boost to the country's $220 billion economy and serve as a springboard for further development of sectors like tourism and entertainment. However, Reuters reported that halfway through the event, the total number of international visitors wasn't likely to meet projections of 1.2 million over the month-long tournament. Hello, I'm Peggy. Thank you for joining us on Funday News. It is Monday, July 25th, and here are your top stories. Bloomberg reported that Australia is on high alert for food and mouth disease and is cattle. 用心生活，享受自由，学习走自己的路。Monday English. The month of gift giving is here, but this time around, spreading Christmas joy comes at a heavy price. That's certainly the case in Romania, where prices in the shops have increased by as much as fourfold. This year's Christmas meal is said to be another victim of price hikes. With many Romanians faced with the prospect of ditching their favorite festive foods to cut costs, one shopper said, "I'm not good with percentages, but I know things got more expensive, and I feel it." Things aren't looking much brighter for the merchants, who say that in some cases they are failing to break even. In Romania, the price of staple goods has shot up the most. Sugar here is 60% more expensive. Butter, oil, flour, and milk costs have also soared. The National Bank of Romania has forecast a 5% decrease in inflation next year, but warns that it won't fall below 10% until at least 2024. Now, economists are warning that when inflation begins to level off, prices might not go down. After making groundbreaking discoveries about the mysterious interior of the red planet, the Inside Lander's mission has officially ended. Mission managers declared the program's end on Wednesday after the lander failed to respond to two messages from Mission Control at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena, California. The spacecraft was losing power due to dust on its solar panels from early this year after the stationary lander spent nearly 1,500 days on Mars. The inside mission ended more than four years after it first landed on November 26, 2018. Inside is short for interior exploration using seismic investigations, geodesy, and heat transport. Designed to last for only two years, Inside's mission was extended twice, but a heavy accumulation of dust on its solar panels caused a steady drop in the lander's power source. Mars is a frigid desert where weather is driven by swirling dust. Over the course of Inside's time on Mars, it survived dust storms and swirling dust devils until Wednesday. According to a study published December 13th in the European Journal of Neuroscience, researchers in Scotland conducted post-mortem studies on the brains of 22 olden cetaceans or tooth whales and discovered that the brains of three species of dolphin found stranded along the Scottish coast have shown the hallmarks of Alzheimer's disease. The findings provide greater insight into the disease in species other than humans and may also provide a possible answer to unexplained strandings of dolphins along the coast. The study looked at specimens from five species: Rissel's dolphins, longfin pilot whales, white-beaked dolphins, harbor porpoises, and bottlenose dolphins. Of the 22 studied, three aged dolphins, a longfin pilot whale, a white-beaked dolphin, and a bottlenose dolphin, presented brain changes or lesions associated with Alzheimer's disease in humans. The similar neuropathology of the aged dolphins in humans and with Alzheimer's suggests that the marine mammals have a susceptibility to the disease. Japan's largest discount chain has reversed the decision to replace its mascot after outrage from fans online. Donkey Joe, Code Donkey in Japan, has over 600 stores in the country and is known for selling a huge range of products at cheap prices. Its mascot, Dumpan, a blue penguin which wears a Santa hat, has become synonymous with the store. So when the company announced on Twitter it had decided to replace the penguin with Don Jachan, it sparked widespread shock on Japanese social media last week. The media reported some fans posted photos of themselves in dumping onesies, while others threatened to boycott Donkey stores. Another user launched a poll asking which mascot Donkey fans preferred. That attracted more than 33,000 clicks, with Dumping winning 93% of the vote. Donkey Joe President Naoki Yoshida said on Twitter he didn't understand the situation either. And had asked relevant departments for clarification. A few hours later, Mr. Yoshida announced that Dumpin would remain as the company's mascot. 
Fundy News will help you sharpen your English skills and keep you informed about international current events. If you want to know more about our other programs and keep in learning about the world's most important topics in English, please click the link in the description below and join Fundy for free. I'm Johnny Wu, your host. I will see you next time.